Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramph. I'm here to usher you in until the first Friday in May, in which I have your art guide to tell you all about the arts that are happening in the downtown Missoula area. And it is the first weekend of the farmer's market. So there's a lot of things popping off this weekend, including the uh, 40th annual brew fest that's happening at Karis Park this weekend as well. So before we get into that, we're going to talk about some news items. Uh, uh, but also I want to mention that there is no city council this week because in their bylaws, they basically said that the fifth Monday, they're not going to bother doing um, city council meetings. Uh, but, uh, uh, for the regular city meetings, but they did work on the homeless working group on Wednesdays, and this is a continuation of finding solutions for urban camping. Uh, they are open for the public input for ur urban camping solutions. You can go to engagemissoula.com and you can find out more information about that. Um, in terms of this, uh, the uh, University of Montana didn't have any kind of encampments that like other campuses across the uh, the nation have done, but they did ho hold a uh, walkout slash uh, march for solidarity for Palestine and a uh, call for an end to the war between Gaza and Israel, and more than 100 students and community members peacefully gathered at the University Hall to denounce Israel's actions in Gaza, calling for the university to disclose its investments and invest from companies tied with Israel. This came out as the ongoing lip service of our leaders have been playing on many sides of this conflict while trying to come some kind of ceasefire or resolution between the Israel government and Hamas. And mind you, that the uh, leadership in Hamas don't necessarily are in the Gaza Strip and in many cases have been using all this uh, cloud and political stance to uh, forward their uh, agenda against the IDF. Another big news out of uh, coming out of Columbia College is that there's certain escalations in uh, many of these campuses across including UCLA which saw many uh, counter protesters use violence against the, pro uh, the encampments uh, while police have been arresting folks who, uh, who are on the pro-Palestinian side more so than the uh, than the uh, video of the violence that's going towards them. So uh, back to uh, what's happening in current uh, Gaza war is that they have resulted in 1,200 Israeli deaths followed by 34,500 Gazan deaths, about two-thirds being women and children, and an overall international emergency of humanitarian aid that can barely get to the residents of Gaza uh, safely. College is one of those where kids can truly become enlightened from an educational standpoint and many pressures of the world come to a head when they are presented with real life issues that, that they take it upon themselves to say no more to the establishment or status quo. And since the U.S. was able to secure foreign aid to fund Ukraine, Taiwan and Israel with the $95 billion packages, lines have been drawn in the sand waiting for a war that may not come from the other side, being Russia, China, or even Iran. But uh, these last months have gone from release the hostages or face an annihilation to about, so I think we've kind of missed the mark on how to wrap things up in the, the Gaza Strip. And overall, this war has only shown videos of people struggling to survive and its toll it takes on children and women who see their homes taken down. There was a very uh, statistic uh, uh, saying that there were more bombs dropped on Gaza than any war in history. And mind you, that article came out in December of last year. And every week it seems like lip service to tell people that the, a deal is on the table and things are going to happen, but the only thing that keeps happening is the collective punishment in the Gaza people, regardless of Hamas. Um, <clears throat> the Colombian president, Manouk Shafif, uh, basically opened her campus to police to arrest her students after suspending them and even after all those students uh, have been suspended and arrested, came back and protested further. It's like you, it's like though everything, even in the kitchen sink, won't do it because they've already used their largest detergent, deterrent, which was suspension. You take away their classes, but you, you just get more time to protest. And overall, they wish to divest and have universities cut ties with Israel. That's the main thing. Um, and let's go back to local news, and this is an ongoing thing with the County of Missoula has sent a request to the state to help save the lumber mill up in Sealy. Uh, the lumber mill has been running for over 75 years and in March, uh, Pyramid Mountain Lumber cited financial challenges as one of the reasons for closing. Around 250 employees are affected by this closure in Missoula County and even if they were able to secure some of the money according to their numbers, they still won't be able to retain the amount of workers that they had because of growing technologies and Overall, the cost of labor is, lumber is down and the number of employees hired is down along with those living in the area having trouble affording to live and work. 
providing additional uh, state assistance might help a new owner buy the mill, but it won't solve the problem of labor and housing shortages and the high cost of living brought on by so many people with outside money moving into the state. Uh, outside money can be misinterpreted, because I'm going to go into a little bit further, as a growing national market and income people can get be gainfully employed in other states while living somewhere else makes state income taxes hard to rely on uh, these out of state not working locally, which an estimated 50 to 80 million dollars would be needed to buy out the pyramid mountain and then upgrade the mill. After that, fewer workers would be needed because the modernization of the mill would have more automation. So saving the mill doesn't necessarily necessarily mean saving jobs, but about 20 percent of the workers are at a retirement age and another 20 percent isn't far behind. So a new mill requiring fewer workers wouldn't hurt anybody, but it uh, attrition would have to uh, reduce the workforce anyway. And so the deadline to solve this is uh, mid-May, May 15th. So also, and speaking of, uh, like I was talking about outside money and all that kind of stuff, and like that has to do with a lot of that concept of property taxes. And so schools have put themselves in a financial corner and not just because of budgeting through the pandemic with a bunch of new programs, but overall the system that built itself up a financial cliff. Uh, Alex, uh, uh, Alex, uh, uh, sorry, I'm going to try to pronounce this last name. I'm sorry, but uh, Alex Sakarison uh, from the Montana Pre, uh, Free Spe uh, from the Montana Free Press wrote an article about educators for this story that reflect growing pro uh, populations in Missoula and Bozeman dealing with these higher demands mixed with many communities asking taxpayers for more money because all this comes to a head in fall of 2024, where many, many federal grant money will sunset. So imagine getting $600 million distributed through the state for four years and then just straight up pulling that plug. The overall amount of money uh, spent on education in Montana still trails the national average by more than uh, $1,000 per student. Belgrade, for example, is having a boom in elementary enrollment growth that its school leaders believe it needs to be built at least one new school in the coming years. Equalization was Montana's constitutional policy in which uh, they get smaller schools in the state, better financial assistance through the other communities where money goes through the state to be distributed throughout the demands and needs based on enrollment. However, property taxes have been uh, leaned on too much over the last 15, 20 years and a very real problem surrounding industry in Montana leaving, going bankrupt, or simply moving businesses, all if not most resulted in Superfund sites, which, are, which do generate tax revenue, but not so much. The tax system in Montana is broken and many of these structures that depended on local industry uh, with a near even split in tax revenue become harder to lean on. And so far, uh, even um, Josh Slotnick, uh, County Commissioner city of the County of Missoula, many people within the city of Missoula basically were uh, nailing this constantly on the head for many Missoulians who would hear this about 90% uh, of, of the uh, tax revenue in our community comes from property taxes. So it used to be kind of a 50-50, but a lot of industry left. There's not much things in terms of that. And so far we've been supplementing kind of like the tourism industry so much, getting uh, Missoula beautiful, a lot of people want to move here. But you know, just back in the school days, you know, while they're trying to get some form of levier bonds passed, the underlying issue of funding has resulted in these budget cliffs. Data provided by the Montana School Board Association notes that Montana has seen a 30-year downward trend in portion of its population represented by school-aged children. Translation, while plenty of people are moving to Montana, that growth isn't necessarily being driven by young families. Heck, even Missoula, since I graduated high school, even before the times got really hokey and weird, uh, not many people stayed in Missoula. Like me, most uh, left and got their education, families, and roots. Missoula had a retention problem in the past, and many of the people that make up Missoula are retired, older families, and the uh, temporary college kids who manage to stay only for so long before they have to leave because of just the cost of living. It seems only logical that schools don't get their new taxes because many new folks don't have the direct connection to these schools unless they've been fortunate to have homes before this pandemic. Missoula has had a hard enough time retaining young local adults uh, from the 90s, 2010s, but it, now it's becoming more and more of a tourist town with those lucky enough to have options. Um, I'm sorry, but this was more about the school system, but overall this is something that goes back to many people's minds as they go to vote for these bonds, levies, and more. So up next we have uh, some short videos from those wacky kids of our Spring Flix camps. And this is probably the last one I hope to show you that has me in this video. So without further ado, here is Pinocchio. 
in which we basically speed, uh, sped run the um, movie Pinocchio. All right, I wait. Ah. Oh, Pinocchio, I wish you were alive. Oh. Man, making that computer do all the work makes me tired. A star. Oh, I wish, I wish, I wish I had a child. I don't know if I'm ready for this kind of responsibility. You're going to boarding school. <laughs> Want to do something bad? Uh, did your dad never tell you to do anything bad? Um, well, he never told me to not do anything bad, so... Here, help us dispose of this body! Don't worry, Pinocchio! I'll help you- ah! Sure! Let's go clog the bathroom! Thanks for having me! Yeah, of course! Bye! Bye! <laughs> you wanna join the sex, kid? Right this way! Oh, Pinocchio, I suddenly feel this thing called guilt. I must find you from boarding school, but I probably shouldn't have went out into the ocean first and foremost, but... <laughs> what, what bad things happen in the ocean? Pinocchio! Oh man, this stinks. Why do bad things always happen to good people? Ugh, I decide to be good, and then bad things happen to me? I'm never doing anything nice ever again. Pinocchio! You've come to save me! Mamma mia! And other Italian phrases. Oh, so, uh, oh wait, how are we gonna get out of here? Wait. we had some could I see your arm? Kindness. Kindness. Right. Oh, we do have cardboard from our my chips. I but I ate them all. Sorry. Not again. Wahoo! That's what Italians say, right? Okay, cool. Ooh, I didn't know you could fly Pinocchio. Yeah. Well, I'm magic after all. <laughs> I'll never send you to a boarding school ever again. This is called a happy ending. Thank you, Papa. You're, you're welcome. has escaped. We need young filmmakers with attitude. Meow, 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 meow. Oh, I would like to take this time to apologize to the Italian community. All right, moving on. Let's um, let's talk about some movies that are coming out this weekend. It's time for a pre-critic, where I pre-judge a movie based on absolutely nothing but my biases based on movies in general. Kicking things off is The Fall Guy. Not to be confused with the video game, we have Ryan, Ryan Re, Go, one of the Ryans, Gosling, yes, the guy who played Ken, running high on his Barbie movie from 
being Barbie's whipping boy uh, to a uh, stunt guy who is the director's whipping boy, uh, who's kind of awkward about the relationship or whatever. But anyways, we have a stuntman who must solve the missing movie star plot that gets him in trouble with the dangerous people only to bumble his way into success. His luck is his skill and in this movie we get a glimpse of behind the scenes of making movies even though this movie is about making movies about making a movie which turns out to be more interesting than the movie they're actually making which is kind of making fun of i want to say they're making fun of marvel but you know who isn't these days all right moving on we have tarot you like those blumhouse movies where it's just like you know hey i'm still holding out for the paper rock scissors but horror movie kind of movies but hey if you love tarot cards then uh, you're going to hate this movie because it's basically going to say that each tarot card represents how you're going to die. So that's basically what it is. Uh, it's, you know, it's watch a 20-something-year-old play teenagers in a harmless game presented by someone who isn't harmless. Turns out to be a death game that predicts each of these wacky teens' death throughout the film based on their tarot card. The best friend from Spider-Man, Ned, is one of these guys in this movie because he's trying to cut his teeth in horror film to get his own... Um, Spider-Man movie of his own. This guy from Spider-Man, the, the, the guy in the chair, I'm assuming the only way to beat death is, is to be destiny, and these kids know just how they're going to do it. Finally, we have Dragon Keeper from those kind of movies where just like, hey, let's just do a dragon. I was like, oh, what's so special about this dragon? I was like, it's the last dragon. Aren't all dragons the last dragon? I was like, yeah, let's do it. In a series of family dragon movies, the fearsome dragon story is pretty straightforward, but most movies these days, uh, uh, have these fire-breathing lizards as wholesome creatures that are either extinct because of humans or are meant to be allegories to human greed and the climate. So this is one of those Chinese releases of the last dragon type movies without Disney, but still, this uh, has Disney tropes all over it from a young girl uh, who's independent with the means to save the dragon baby and all of dragon kind. All right, and uh, you know, Yep, speaking of dub and stuff, uh, even though I wasn't mentioned in it, uh, I have a brand new dub and stuff of Things to Come, a movie that was made in 1936, predicting what life would be like in 2036, which is getting pretty close. So without further ado, here's this. Where are you guys going to be in 2036? Attention all travelers. The tube system has been backed up. We are working on it. All tube service has been delayed. Daddy, Daddy, why are all the tubes not working? I just saw a tube move just now. Well, young one, I can't say for certain. I'm not really in charge of that. Here, come watch some old TV with me. This is some ships from way back in the day. Ew, how inefficient. Well, that's just how it was back in the day. We'd get on ships with a bunch of other men, and then we would just travel the world three weeks at a time. Now, please... Study the television a little bit longer. It's the only way we can educate you these days, because I certainly can't. Hey, Daddy, why are you so old? <laughs> All the other kids' dads aren't as old as you. I put my career of having a family, but when I was given the opportunity to take my spinal fluid and create a new baby, I created you. Oh, am I some kind of clone or something? Was I really grown in a lab? Well, technically, you were grown inside me, kind of like a tumor, but you got all the nutrients that you needed from my body, so I was able to, uh, have the doctors take you out when you grew to term. Oh, jeez, Dad, that's kind of crazy. Aren't you a little old to be having a kid? Uh, oh, that's not going to heal well, but let me tell you something here, honey. In the future, we have options, and when you have options, you're able to do all sorts of wonderful things, including having kids at a really, really old age. Like you? How old are you anyways? Well, in the future, when you're really old, you can put your brain into a robot. Oh, wow. Can I put my brain into a robot? Maybe I can be like a robot pony, or maybe a horse, or maybe a tiger. Do you think I can be a tiger, Dad? You can be anything you put your mind to. Daddy, could you tell me what it was like growing up in your old era? Oh, uh, that's every parent's dream to tell all about the good old days. Let me tell you one thing. Back in the old days, cars used to run on dead dinosaurs and now they run on dead humans it's quite efficient hello what is it knock knock dystopian future
Oh yes, to think uh, uh, hundreds of hundred years ago, people would think that uh, in the future there's going to be a lot of tube transportation. I mean, it was pretty big in the '90s, especially if you were a, a Costco shopper for sure. But yeah, well, let's not let's not ruminate any further. Uh, I do have a long show today, um, and it feels a little bit longer just because I don't have city council. So I do want to talk a little bit about your First Friday stuff. So. First Friday, uh, it is the first Friday of the month, and the city of Missoula takes it upon themselves to uh, roughly um, host. Um, you know, it's more just like kind of a cultural thing. You know, a lot of other communities used to do it, and now it's more of just like kind of like a hashtag. And essentially what it's used for is to promote uh, people to go out on a Friday night, look at some of the arts, maybe go out for dinner, maybe hang out a little bit. Just a, a nice little thing just to do right after you're done with uh, work for the day. Uh, nothing too uh, extreme, you know, with the idea of just going out to the bars in downtown just to enjoy the downtown area without having to uh, uh, worry so much about, you know, just finding a restaurant, but just having another excuse to just enjoy the art and culture of the city of Missoula. And so kicking things off over at the AC Hotel, we have J.W. Krantz um, hosting his exhibit. Um, he specializes in wildlife acrylic painting. His interest uh, in art came at a young age. His dad was an artist and his parents were uh, collectors of art and artifacts. Um, they own Grizzly Gallery and museum, uh, uh, museum in the Mission Valley. Jerry is a self-taught artist and prefers working in oils. His subject mainly in animals, Indians, scenery, and birds. He studies his subject year-round and gives himself uh, perspectives and ideas. Um, yep, he's going to be featured at the AC Hotel, which I believe is the one corner where the um, old mercantile on the other side of the mercantile is. So you might you'll be able to check that out. Up next. Uh, we have uh, Jen uh, Feenstra, creative, mixing together some of the favorite mediums like paint, wood, metal, and leather. Uh, she also loves incorporating natural elements into her, her creative process, either through the materials, materials used or subject matter in creations. Has a husband and two boys and all live in the mountains in Montana, inspired by the beautiful nature and scenery you see in these little bits of beauty throughout the world. Um, then we have Frame of Mind's sixth annual juried show. This is a bunch of different arts and all just, uh, for the past six years, Frame of Mind has reached, art, uh, reached out to the art community with their annual call for artists in this juried ex, uh, exp, uh, exposition. Uh, yep, this is a celebration of artists and age, of all ages, backgrounds, medias, and styles. Um, this ec, um, art show has a few local artists to an international event with participants from all over the United States, Canada, and even England. Each year they work to, uh, with artists uh, judged by two to three local influential artists in the community um, and not to only help these participants go, grow and learn, but also for the best of the best each year. This coincides with the Frame of Mind 10th year anniversary celebration. So there's definitely a lot to look forward to tonight. Um, we also have Learning with Meaning. They have an organization. This is very much like, uh, uh, you know, these are some of the school kids who are pulled out of um, the mainstream public schools and are brought into these kind of collective art education facilities run through the parents. This is the first uh, student art show running from 5 to 7 p.m. They have art of various kinds made by the students and staff available for purchase. There will be crafts for adults and kids along with food for purchase. They also have booths um, and be able to donate at the Missoula Gives campaign. Finally, this is an open house for our middle school and high school Aspire. And if you don't know where this is, they usually host Aspire at the old library just across the street from this library that we're standing in right now. Uh, number five, we have a lot of art to go through, and this is the one that's happening at the Missoula Art Museum. Rachel Allen uh, will speak about the new ex ex exhibition, We Stand With You. Contemporary artists honor the families of the missing and murdered indigenous relatives crisis, um, which is opened in the Linda M. Faust, uh, Frost Gallery of Contemporary American Indian Art from May 3rd through September 7th, exhibited by two invites indigenous and descendants artists to bring awareness to the missing and murdered indigenous relative, relative crisis in Montana. We stand with you and we welcome in indigenous voices from artists and various tribe affiliations. Then we have uh, another one from uh, Paxson Panther Art Prowl. This kid-centric celebrates uh, art and joined Paxson Elementary School and the surrounding Missoula community to celebrate their new mural by Josh Quick ice cream, fun activities, and drawing prizes. Then we got Montana Clay, 
and this is going to be at the Clay Studio of Missoula. The exhibition highlights the work of 40 artists participating in the Helena, Montana-based Montana Clay Tour taking place from July 28th to the 21st. The, the Montana Clay Tour brings together ceramic artists from across Montana who share passion for contemporary uh, ceramics. The Clay Tour's mission is to showcase um, the talent and diversity of Montana's ceramic uh, community through an annual open studio tour invited people into artist studios, beautifully crafted, and community is valued in this selection of work, and this tour promotes the education and celebration of handmade art. We also have Women, a Force of Nature, uh, in inaugural art auction fundraiser at the Confluence Center. Step into the world where women embrace the rhythms of nature, where the uh, empowerment takes root in the exploration of plant wisdom and self and community care uh, at Earth Within Girls inaugural art auction fundraiser. This immersive experience will allow attendees to uh, immediately uh, engage with showcase art, bid on auction items, and learn more about Earth within girls that it'll be studying artwork wellness items fitness and restaurant gift cards for silent auction the art will be available for viewing and bidding through the entire month of may and the confluence center exhibition will continue throughout the end of may then we have artist shop yep we have a thick of a lot of art a lot of art um uh, artist shop colors of montana by julie wolf artist shop is hosting and growing up in montana led her to believe that the world is wide open and richly colorful and she is intrigued with an orange and purple streaks of rust of an old truck or an orange purple streaks in the sky at sunset that she's delighted by color and she needs to share what she observes with this exhibition uh, then we have a am pop-up gallery this is at the rent hotel the monthly features uh, coral rains uh, she graduated by bachelor of arts in 2011 from university of montana after having moved back to montana from washington where she has lived for eight years coral has spent the past decade navigating her relationship between the environment and its influences on her identity and well-being how does it shape our perception our lifestyle and our grief journeys um, these are the things to explore as she paints animal subjects with distinct montana landscapes in the background and is grounding spiritual anchor. And so it's gonna be at the Rent Hotel tonight, and all these happen from five to 8 p.m. or five to seven, most of them. Um, Kim Lavender is gonna be at Pure West Christi, uh, Christie's Real Estate. Um, they're gonna be hosting this. Uh, Kim Lavender's stunning artwork, mingle with fellow art enthusiasts, enjoy drink on the house. They're located on the corner of North Higgins, Alder, and Railroad Street across from the uh, Red X's at the end of Higgins Avenue. And then wrapping up, is Ducre Chocolate Maker is going to be hosting a Visions of Montana, uh, Mustangs and Beyond. Opening show to celebrate this accompli accomplished photographer, uh, Antonia Wolf and the Majestic Montana. So there's all your art and your little bit of taste of everything that's happening in Missoula for your first Friday. I actually have some art I want to kind of uh, reiterate with some of the things that MCAT does, and we do this pretty much every Saturday and Sunday, and you can get involved, uh, and you can find out more by going on to MCAT.org. <laughs> Let's get deep into some of the events that are happening uh, in the city of Missoula right now. I also wanted to give a shout out to uh, the city band. Uh, they're going to be uh, starting kicking off their uh, event season this summer as well. I'm going to throw to one of their videos after this uh, little spiel. After graduation for high schools have uh, commenced after in the middle of June, the uh, city of uh, the city band, Missoula City Band, hosts a rehearsal every Monday night at the Bonner Park Grand Shell starting at 7 p.m. And then they have their shows every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. And yeah, so without further ado, here's a nice little taste of what you might expect from Bonner Park. <laughs> And here's 
a little bit of editor note at the very end with you see that extremely large crowd. They, that was not only just for City of Bend, but that was also for the International Choir Festival. I just wanted to make it seem more popular than it was. Editor's note right there. All right, so let's uh, kick things off. And um, you know, if we're talking a little bit more about uh, in city bands, uh, many other nonprofit organizations very much like the city band is being a part of this campaign that's happening right now. And that's Missoula Gives, and it's the last day to uh, give to your local area nonprofits. And there's a lot in Missoula and Ravella counties. Um, it will wrap up by 6 p.m. tonight. You can go to uh, Missoula Gives. MissoulaGives.org, and it brings into this little uh, website right here. We have about 10 hours and 28 minutes, according to this clock. And if you're watching this in this repeat in the afternoon, be aware that it's most likely going to be uh, half that, if not less. Uh, so yeah, they're doing a bunch of things with the Missoula and Bitterroot areas. They're looking at all this stuff. And so far, Gleiser Ice Rink has raised $77,000. Lowell School PTA has $29,000. Arlie is $23,000, the Butterfly House is $20,000, and there's a lot of different things happening for sure, and look at all these wonderful organizations getting their just due within the city of Missoula, and not to mention it's always nice to have these kind of big days where you're just kind of be like, oh, all this money, all this kind of stuff, and so far, they're looking to try to raise $1.5 million by the end of today, um, but overall, uh, right now, so far, they have raised about $500,000, um, and they've already reached about 2,500 donors for this to about oh, almost 200 organizations. So there's definitely a lot going on. There's a lot of events uh, surrounding and uh, going in tandem with First Friday and also Missoula Gives. Um, so uh, we're going to kick things off. We're going to talk about some of the usual stuff that happens. If you're interested in doing some yoga, they have a cancer support community at the Red Willow. This is Yoga for a Healthy Aging. Red w Willow, Willow is one of those many uh, organizations in town that kind of encourages adults to take on education, classes, community kind of groups. They also have these kind of things with the uh, Lifelong Learning Center. Red Willow seems to be a little bit more community uh, focused. Well, Learning Center is more about classes. Um, Stroller Strides, uh, this is also one of those kind of classes that kind of bring people together. This is a Mommy and Me workout class that happens every most days at 9.30 a.m. at Bonner Park. Missoula Butterfly House and Sectarium, they have their open hours at 10 a.m. They're also doing the Missoula Gives. They're doing a bunch of things happening there today as well. They usually have a butterfly release around 10.30 a.m. Family Fun Time at Mismo Gymnastics. Um, Mismo, there's a bunch of indoor fun stuff with Mismo, YMCA, Roof Decker Sports Center. There's a lot of things like that. Um, we're having kind of like a true spring here in the city of Missoula, which means, um, what I mean by that, it's like, it's nice outside, but it feels cold. That's what spring in Missoula really is, because we've had a lot of weird, warm weeks this last couple, this last month or so, but it seems like things are getting more back to a, a relative normal. Rivers are high, weather is cold, uh, but it still looks really nice. So um, it's a good way to be nice sweater weather, get out, get out and about, don't have to worry about sweating too hard. Uh, Tiny Tales, um, this happens every Friday at 10.30 a.m. It's a great way for kids to learn and engage with reading and activities provided at the Missoula Public Library. Preschool Plague Time, uh, oh, where is that at? Oh, that's actually happened at YMCA, so you can check that out uh, at 10.45. Then we have Dillard's uh, sen Sensational. Uh, so Dillard's biggest event of the season, Bitterroot Humane Association Adoptive Drive, food, um, trucks, pockets, miles for miles, Weeboo uh, Bistro, Wear Your Roots custom shirt booth, fashion show at 6 p.m., and more than $4,000 in giveaways just for attending. This is Dillard's at the Southgate Mall. Lunch at the Missoula Senior Center. Uh, they do this every uh, weekday at 11.30 a.m. These are usually about 5 to $8 per uh, uh, lunch, and they're a great way for people who are 55 and older looking for a nutritious, easy meal, and yeah, they have a great kitchen and everything like that. Also, the Pavarella Center hosts uh, breakfast, uh, lunch, and dinner at various times, but they have a lunch at 11.30 every single day for anybody who is struggling to get food security. But also, I should mention that the Missoula Food Bank is a great way if you want to be prepped and get a lot of food with no judgment, little to no cost, and help people along the way. Uh, yarns, that happens every Friday. Uh, at the, on the fourth floor at the Missoula Public Library. They also have watercolor. They used to have more guided watercolor, but they still do watercolor, uh, uh, watercolor classes most Fridays here at the Missoula Public Library. 
uh, Missoula Gibbs. They have a lunch with the executive director um, at the Historic, Historic Museum at Fort Missoula. They're doing a lunch and learn with the executive description. They're doing an in-depth discussion on how you can help keep history alive. Uh, Matt Lotzeheiser, the director of the Historic Museum at Fort Missoula, walks and talks about how donations received during Missoula Gives directly impacts historic preservation around 32-acre museum grounds. Also, they just uh, installed a major HVAC system into their uh, museum, which will allow them to uh, control uh, room temperatures of all their rooms so they can keep their historic uh, uh, historic items in pristine condition as long as possible. Um, so a lot of them have been kind of dealing with a major closure with the major uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars of HVAC improvements. So they're on track to being reopened by the uh, tourists and uh, end of May, early June season, if not sooner. Uh, free mini yoga sessions at the Support Missoula Gibbs. Peak Wellness and uh, Health and Wellness Center is doing mini yoga. Starting at noon today, hands-on science, fun with physics at Spectrum here in the public library on the second floor. Lego Club and after-school meals at 2.30 p.m. Um, Missoula, Butter, uh, Missoula and Bureau Gibbs, they have a wrap-up party at 5 p.m. at Headwaters Foundation at the Confluence Center. The Mighty Travis at Ten Spoon Winery is going to be playing acoustic music starting at 6 p.m. Way Down North is going to be at Old Post playing some bluegrass music at 7 p.m. Um, Disney's Beauty and the Beast, uh, they're going to be doing one more weekend after this one, and I just wanted to let you guys know, Thursday through Sunday, they have 7.30 p.m. shows with an earlier evening show on Sundays at 6.30, and then Saturday and Sunday they have matinees at 2 p.m. I only know this because I used to do MCT quite a bit when I was in my younger days. Uh, Dance Underground, this is a part of, of the University of Montana. It's a unique Im Im um, um, intimate production that provides a platform for choreography to experiment uh, artistically through the movement that they create. This is the district production. Choreography work from both students and faculty will be represented. No performances will be identical since different pieces are performed in each show. And so come to all three, the culminating performance will feature choreography created by over 10 students as well as the School of Theater and Dance faculty. So this is going to be a big event that happening this weekend. Uh, I think it's going to be a two-night deal happening at the Denison Theater. You might want to double check on that as well. MissoulaEvents.net where you can learn more. Miscast Production, uh, Westside Theater is hosting, um, this is their, um, uh, Westside Theater is the uh, Bear Bait Dance group that they opened, that they started uh, working in this theater. And their play is Ordinary Days. It's based in New York 2006. It's a musical following four characters, Charlie and Jason, Warren and Deb. Um, uh, Ordinary Days captures the essence of every day and it reminds us that fulfillment, happiness, and even love can be found in all the regular places. Oh, yeah, cool. Throw, uh, thrown Out Bones is going to be playing um, some funk music at Cranky Sam Public House at 8 p.m. tonight. Uh, Hard Hugs at the Top Hat is playing electronic music. And then, starting for your Saturday, we're, we're back to your farmer's market. So every single Saturday through the end of October, farmer's market is going to be outdoors underneath the Clark, uh, the uh, Higgins Bear Track Bridge, the Red X's, and in front of the Thomas Mar Bar and surrounding areas in the downtown area. You can't miss it. It's a great, wonderful uh, event for people looking to get produce, some interesting knickknacks, great for tourists, all that kind of stuff. Uh, get ready for a home ownership, home buyer class, and so it's the beginning of a new season, and it's a new round for people always looking for homes. And so Homeward is a great organization for first-time home buyers. They help you get financial fitness and help you with everything that you need to buy your house. Heck, if an idiot like me can buy a house, you can too. So Homeward is a great organization for you to take advantage of, and they have a class on Saturday starting at 9 a.m. tomorrow. Montana State Wood Carving Show, Montana, the Missoula County Fairgrounds is hosting a May 4th, 5th uh, from 9 to 5, 10.30, uh, 11.30 to 4 on Sunday. $5 admission wood carving demonstration and vendors, wood carving, wood turning, wood burning, and scroll saw art. And so that's going to be up at the Missoula County Fairgrounds. The Prairie Sisters Vintage Market, this is going to be at the Historic Museum at Fort Missoula from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. It's a vintage market at Fort Missoula. What else do you need to know? Missoula, uh, museum tour is going to be at the Missoula Art Museum. They also do a teen, uh, um, open teen um, focus activity at 12:30. Just kid teens that want to do art, pop on into the MAM at 12:30. Just do art. Art supply, arts is supplied, and they also have some lunch for you. Uh, dry lawn gardening workshop. 
Moon Randolph Homestead is open again. They have open hours starting at 12 noon, but at starting at 11, they're talking about dry land uh, ga um, gardening at the Moon Randolph Homestead. Unless it snows quite a lot, there'll be use of water at the homestead. Garden typically dries up in August. If they want to continue watering their vegetable garden beyond, then they'll have to truck in the water. All this effort over the years has made them think about ways to reduce the watering needs. All aboard a history uh, walk for families, downtown Missoula, starting at 11 a.m. <coughs> so they're doing a history walk for uh, families and stuff. You can learn more online. I guess I didn't add more to much of a blurb about that further, so we're going to move on. So like I said, uh, they're doing a Garden City Brew Fest. I thought it was the 40th anniversary, but I'm going to correct myself. It's going to be the 30th annual Garden City Brew Fest. Uh, often imitated but never replicated, this Montana's original brew fest takes over 50 local and regional beers, seltzers, and ciders in the heart of Missoula alongside wine, food, vendors, music, and more starting at 12 noon. Goes on for quite some time too from what I saw on their uh, a website, but it's free to all to attend. Interest in tasting beers and ciders cost $20, which includes a 7-ounce taster glass wristband and four tokens. Additional tokens are two for $3 cash only. Uh, the gathering of TMSM, Indigenous Art and Culture, Travelers Rest State Park is hosting the Indigenous Art and Cultural uh, join the Travelers Rest State Park for a day of learning and creating with Indigenous demonstra demonstrators, learn about Indigenous cultures and life way, participate in art wor workshops and uh, shop from Indigenous vendors. Man, so many things are happening on Saturday and I have, I don't know, I'd, I have to work on Saturday. Okay, so uh, Weary Travelers Music Festival, University of Montana is hosting a uh, music festival at the Oval. So it's going to be outside from about 12.45 to 9 p.m. Musicians from all over Montana, including the Love Darts, Hey Illy, and Calamity Cowboy with the headline by Alex Vial from Seattle, Washington. Um, we also have our MCAT Saturday drop-ins. These are the last Saturdays in May for your kids, uh, age 8 to about 14. You know, kids who have a, a certain concept or excitement to basically bring their toys to life in the stop animation process and make videos along the way. Uh, Maker Space, Mending and Sewing, Walk-In Hours at the Missoula Public Library at 2.30 p.m. Uh, good Old Fashioned, live at Ten Spoon Winery. It's going to be uh, performing bluegrass music. Uh, 6.30 p.m., Glacier Ice Rink is doing Figure Skating Club sh uh, Showcase on Ice. Uh, sc sc scarabic Serenades. Uh, they're doing a musical premiere at the um, Mitchell Butterfly House. Its uh, composer, Jesse uh, Harvey, will conduct a three sui musical score inspired by the mating rituals of Japanese rhinoceros beetles. Uh, it's a research-based performance of modern contemporary choreography accompanied by a chamber sextet. Uh, the chamber sextet is compromised of student musicians from the University of Montana, and they're doing quite a show starting at 7 p.m., on a Saturday night. Missoula Folklore Society Contra Dance at the Elks Lodge Ballroom. They do this every Saturday at 8 p.m. Jazz Night uh, Saturdays with the Connor uh, Trio at the Staven Hoop. You can check that out. Uh, Solid State Karaoke at Westside Lanes. Chris Moon is going to some DJ music at Badlander on Saturdays. Uh, wrapping up your Saturday. And so before I wrap up my show, I want to just give a little shout out on Sunday. They're doing a tool and knife resharpening at the Missoula Urban Demonstration, uh, Demonstration Project, otherwise known as MUD. Is that right next to Missoula Quality? Uh, wait, wait, Missoula uh, Home Resource, my bad. Turner Farms is also doing a spring, fling, uh, spring fling farm market at Turner Farms. So it's a great way for people to get produce on Sunday if you missed your Saturday um, mar market as well. So they're starting at 12 noon on Sunday. And then um, I want to give a shout out to the Missoula Community Choral Chorus uh, Concert. They're doing a Spring to Joy. So they do a spring concert every year and start at 3 p.m. at the Denison Theater at the University of Montana. The Community Choirs Choir is going to be uh, performing and singing for y'all. And then if you want comedy, you have uh, VFWs doing a thing on Sunday night uh, every Sunday at 8 p.m. And then we got karaoke at the Sunrise Saloon for those who want to sing in public badly because that's what karaoke translates to to sing badly all right so without, if you want to learn more you can go to missoulaevents.net it is a wonderful resource for anyone who wanting to learn more about what's happening in the city of missoula and all that kind of stuff all right so that about does it i wanted to thank you guys for joining me this morning and it is the last day for missoula gives so if you want to support your local area nonprofits, go to missoulagives.org so for wake up missoula i'm scott ramp i hope you guys have a wonderful weekend